Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. Today's video, we're going to be talking about how to smooth out your mid frequencies and your mastering. You know, we focus a lot on boosting the low end, boosting the high end, getting a really crisp air on our masters, but we don't talk as much about the mids and the mid frequencies are especially important. All the way from the start, I can feel it in my heart like from the start. Let's go ahead and play back this master. This is a track by Miraculous. I'm healed, yeah, no. I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, yeah. In your Holy Spirit, you got power, power to come and heal us, heal us, come and set us free. In your Holy Spirit, you got power, power to come and heal us. Heal us, come and set us free. Thank you, Jesus, for healing. All right, so let's talk about some of these points that I've dialed in here and specifically how to turn Pro Q3 into a dynamic EQ, meaning that it's going to interact with our signal as we cross a certain threshold. So I have some points here that uh, tend to be kind of common for me in mastering, usually when we have a lot of vocal stacking or harmonies, which we have in the case of this session. So let's go ahead and solo these. I just want you to kind of dial in and get a feel for these. So you can hear just soloing the 3K, we get a lot of buildup there on the word healed. And so I wanted to tame that a little bit. And all I have to do is just create that plot here. And then if you go down to this red circle, this is gonna be your dynamic range. And so we can adjust that uh, to go up or down, uh, depending on where we're at on the threshold. And then once it crosses that, we'll have that reduction. Generally speaking, if you've done your mix correctly, these are gonna be pretty light cuts. I'm doing it a little bit more dramatically for the example here. But if you also look at our uh, scale, I have it at about 77%, whereas it was at 100%. So that just means that the gain scale, it will bring it down and we can uh, scale that accordingly to make it less intense or more intense. And that last one was 200. So I, I do that just to give you an idea of how you want to isolate these and monitor them so that you can really hear any buildup that may be happening and identify some problematic areas in your mid frequencies. And then once you've done that, we can just go down here and start dialing in these, this dynamic range that's going to give us a little bit of reduction. I'm going to disable it just so that you can hear in the context of the mix what's actually happening here. The vocal's still up front, but it just kind of tucks it in with the beat and gives us more of a glued, cohesive sound. And it just tames some of those mid harsh frequencies that, uh, you know, on larger speakers may not be as noticeable. Once you start going into smaller speakers, whether it be, you know, headphone earbuds or your laptop, you're going to start to have those frequencies poke out more because those speakers just don't portray those as well. Now, just to add, I'm sure a lot of you say, well, why don't you use a multiband compressor here? Definitely an option. However, for me, I tend to like to rely on multiband compression and compression for that matter as a whole in the mixing stage. So I want to do my heavy compression there. And then when I get to mastering, I personally prefer the dynamic EQ over a multiband compressor. I just like the sound and the, uh, the sonic quality that you get out of a dynamic EQ uh, in the mastering stage specifically, but not to say that you can't try a multiband compressor if you don't have a dynamic EQ to get similar results. I hope this helps. If you learn anything in the video, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing. We'll talk to you soon.